All right. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, this one webinar uh, and only webinar on the Rio Grande Valley, Deep South Texas wildfire spread potential, mainly for March 30th, 2022. So let's get going for the overview. As you can see on the upper left here, this is a photo from uh, Benny Cano. He's our Farm Services Extension agent in Edinburgh. And that is a scary scene. It is very dry, highly cured fuels. These are grasses that are also fairly high due to the growth that we had last spring into summer and again in October. And that is ready to burn. We don't want things to burn. Um, as you can see, a dry front will sweep through. I don't call it cold because behind this front, it's going to get rather hot but it will be like a blast furnace of uh, heat and dry behind it coming in late tomorrow morning, right on through the afternoon. And from our folks at the Texas A&M Forest Service, you can see the forecast fire danger is for extreme potential, basically for most, much of the Rio Grande Valley and the deep South Texas brush country and ranch lands. So that is why we're really concerned about tomorrow. Now, one thing before I continue about wildfire is Unlike a heavy rainfall event that could produce flooding or something like a tropical cyclone that could produce strong winds, there is no fire right now. And the goal of all of this is to prevent the fire from starting as best as we can so we can have all the wind and dry and heat we need. But if we don't have a spark, we don't have a fire. And that's the best news that we can hope for when this whole situation is over. But we want everyone here to be prepared and be ready for not only deployment of resources, but also messaging to the public that tomorrow is a day that we really, really need to be careful and not have any fires start. So without further ado, the bottom lines, the region of highest concern is mainly along and west of Interstate Highway 69C and US 281. That's Brooks, Hidalgo County out to the west, including the brush country and Rio Grande Plains. Rapid growth of wildfire starts are actually likely this afternoon in these areas due to the gusty winds this time coming from the south modestly low humidity, again, not very low, but low enough that we have a concern here and critically dry fuels. Even though the humidity is up a bit today, the fuels are still very dry. So a fire that were to start, say, in Jim Hogg or Starr County could rapidly spread today as well. So we want people to be aware of that. But the real concern we have and why we're having this webinar is tomorrow, the 30th, where we expect very rapid to potentially explosive growth of wildfire starts. Uh, these are, again, the I-69C US 281 West in Brooks and Hidalgo County are the really critical concerns. We'll explain why momentarily, but we're also concerned about places like Kennedy, Western Willacy, and Western Cameron due to the strong winds from the Northwest this time, not the South, but the Northwest, very low humidity, extremely dry fuels, and hot to very hot temperatures for this time of year. And finally, we just reiterate again, the best wildfire is the one that never starts. Activities that may spark a fire must not be done either today or tomorrow or even beyond, but really keying on Wednesday. So included in this are welding and grinding of farm equipment, driving tractors on grass or brush, or any kind of burning of trash. And we'll explain why that's important in the next few slides. So how has this fire season been so far? It's gotten really active. On the left, this is the Texas A&M Forest Service public viewer showing all the um, events across South and Central Texas, which includes the Eastland case that's up in here that we've all read about. But the area highlighted in red is the critical concern area where we've seen um, tens of thousands of acres already burn uh, so far. The, one in the middle here is Fire Connect, which includes the local fire department reports. So you can see a whole bunch of them in Starr County uh, since the beginning of March. So by the way, this does not include the uh, February events that we have, but we'll talk about them momentarily. Then to the right, situational, situational awareness, the National Center for Wildfire Group, um, Wildfire Growth, the Interra Group has a lot of really good information on what's happened so far and what may be underway, including satellite depiction of potential hotspots. So it's a good site to use. We can provide that information later. So here's a highlighted activity since February 10th, 2022. And there's a whole bunch of named fires here. So let's look at them real quick. Total acreage burned so far is over 21,000 acres. 
That's quite a bit getting into late March. The highlights include the Hayfield South Fire, which is the one most recently contained over 11,000 acres in central Kennedy County. And this is on the King Ranch in the second consecutive year that we've had an 11,000 acre fire on the King Ranch. Last year's event, also in late March, occurred in the uh, Brooks County portion of the King Ranch. The Polo Fire also occurred in Kennedy County in early February, and that would produce 3,600 acres of burn. That was a day where the humidity wasn't all that high and temperatures were actually getting cool, but there had been 12 freezes leading into that, or around 12 freezes, and that highly cured the grasses there, which had not started to turn green because it had been so chilly in January into much of February. So when it was ready to go, a spark began that fire and you saw how many acres we had. The 755 fire, same thing. This was in Brooks County right here. Uh, it was 2,000 acres. It, the cause was a roadside burn. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what sparked that, but it was on the roadside and ultimately it consumed 2,000 acres. Again, highly cured fuels, even though the weather wasn't as conducive as it is now to extreme spread. La Paloma fire you may have heard about. It was covered by the news extensively. That was in Southeast Star County near the Hidalgo Line uh, just uh, one and a half weekends ago, and 1,068 acres burned very quickly. This was a trash burn. The Miller II fire, I call it. Actually, there's two fires named Miller. Uh, this was on March 23rd through 25th, 1,058 acres uh, up here in uh, Jim Hogg County with a cause still to be determined. There was also the Miller One fire, I call this one, in Falfurius, 275 acres, was a vehicle rollover uh, on the side of the road that eventually consumed or destroyed six buildings with others damaged at a cost we think of over $100,000. So what are we looking at today? We don't want to let our guard off for this afternoon. Critical to extreme fire danger uh, is, the, is the overall scale of things, but we think there's potentially critical situation along and west of, of the interstate and 281 here in Brooks, Hidalgo, out towards the Rio Grande Plains. This also includes the South Texas brush country. But tomorrow is the biggest concern where we've nosed this area of potentially extreme into Kennedy County where we showed you those fires that have already burned a total of 14,000 acres. But um, right now the forecast is for critical for the entire area but with winds, if they gust a bit higher, we could be into extreme conditions, which means any fire that starts could explosively develop from 10 to 1,000 to 10,000 or more acres, and it'll be moving as well because of those pretty strong winds. So we really, really want people to be on guard tomorrow, especially in these areas that are highlighted in purple, but we don't wanna let our guard down for the areas also highlighted here in red. So what are the main factors of grass moisture? So today, even though we have higher humidity, we still have critically dry fuels in terms of grass across most areas of the Rio Grande Valley and the South Texas brush and ranch country, but also a pocket here of critically dry fuels in Star County. And that's before the low humidities arrive, which come tomorrow. As you can see here, everybody's in critical dryness. That's the red color across all of South Texas, much of West Texas, and basically all the Rio Grande Valley except along and east of Highway 77. But as we mentioned before, even those areas are of concern because of the flash dry nature of the situation. And notice here on the right, Thursday, the wind isn't going to be that strong at all Thursday, but look how dry our fuels will be, extremely dry again. So we won't let our guard down for Thursday despite the lighter winds. So here's an interesting factor that the Texas A&M Fire Service looks at for predictive situations. And the black line is the energy release component, which allows how much fire can grow, how rapidly. And when you're above the 90th percentile, you're in some trouble. And that's the green line here. When you're above the 97th percentile, you're in deeper trouble. And look how far above, not only the 97th percentile we are, but above the prior max. So these are, a, a recent record value. So again, I don't know how, how far back the data go. I want to say 20, 30 years plus. So anywhere in black above the, the red line is a record value. You can see these are matched up well with some of these fire outbreaks that we've had in the last two weeks. And even though the forecast is for a slight decrease, 
over the next few days, it's still generally above that 97th percentile. And all these forecast values on this green line are above the red line for the prior maximum. So bottom line, is we are not done yet, even after tomorrow. We have to keep our pedal to the metal for fire prevention and fire safety right on, not only through the weekend, but probably over the next two to three weeks or more heading into April, as you all have seen with the seasonal forecast. So the factors that we're most concerned with, in addition to the fact that everything is bone dry out there, is the rapid, uh, repeated drying caused by the low humidity tomorrow afternoon, 10% or less, in those areas I mentioned before, and even 12% or less along and west of Highway 77, which includes much of Kennedy County, which has had plenty of burns already. Then the peak wind gusts are critical here. 25 to 30 mile per hour gusts on the open brush and open range uh, tomorrow afternoon. But here's the situation. The reason we mentioned potentially extreme is if wind gusts get up to 35 or 40 miles per hour, which is a reasonable worst case based on some of the new model data coming in, that could cause the extreme to explosive wildfire spread. And we really don't want those fires to start so that they spread so quickly that they're not able to be contained or controlled and ultimately could affect populated areas. If winds get even higher than that, we could be in danger of seeing what's called a natural situation, meaning a power line could fall and spark on that very dry grass. There's really no way we can stop that from going. It's, it's different than a sparking piece of equipment or someone incidentally lighting a fire or a vehicle burn or a trash burn. Those are human caused situations, unintentional, but still human caused. Uh, but the power line falling is something we really can't control if the winds get too strong. So be aware of that. That has been a situation in the past, which has caused a very large acreage fires where the power line sparks. There's really not much we can do ahead of time, unfortunately. So we're looking at humidity on the 31st. This is Thursday. Now, winds will be much lighter. We're talking 5 to 10, maybe some mile, 15 mile per hour wind gusts. But you combine that with very low humidity and now flash dried fuels are already super cured. And you have an issue in those areas we mentioned before, mainly along and west of Interstate Highway 69C and I, uh, US 281, that Brooks Hidalgo westward. These humidity values going below 15% again on Thursday. So your key takeaways to close out, rapid spread of wildfire is possible mainly along and west of Interstate 69C today, as well as US 281 up into Brooks County, uh, basically due to the strong winds combined with the very dry fuels that are still in place. Humidity, not as much a factor, but it doesn't take much modest humidity to uh, be sufficient in a case like today to cause uh, some rapid spread. But tomorrow in the purple is the big thing, very rapid to potentially explosive spread of wildfire in those same areas with rapid spread possible elsewhere. So really everybody needs to be on guard for fire prevention and fire safety. The outlook into early to mid-April indicates further dryness and additional dry fronts that could exacerbate the situation. One of the things we look at is the drought monitor and the drought monitor continues to march eastward with uh, severe to extreme conditions or level two and three out of the four point scale continue to march eastward and ultimately we expect those numbers to reach the populated areas of the Rio Grande Valley as well as uh, towards Willacy County too where the farmland is. So stay tuned for that. Finally, most, most importantly, continue to advise for fire prevention for all of your constituents. We actually have about 24 graphics, one dozen in English and one dozen in Spanish that we can send you upon request to help you prov uh, promote prevention and safety, either by your web pages, either through burn bans, either through social media, whatever methods you have to pre prevent fires and help people do that is really going to be a lifesaver and a property saver down the road. Uh, more information, we will have email updates as necessary through the week. This is the only webinar we'll be conducting on this particular event, but it's possible that we could do more, e uh, more webinars as we get into April if similar circumstances evolve or develop during that time frame. So with that, I will close out the webinar and I'm going to stop the recording.